Well, it finally happened. I got the call. The call to be ready to deploy at a moment's notice. So we've had our first wildland fire, although it's been out of state, but uh, we got uh, notified uh, by the powers that be to get your stuff in order and get ready. You could be could be called on to leave within an hour's notice. So today I'm going to show you, we're going to go, we're going to break it down. Everything that a wildland firefighter takes into um, not only small conflagrations, but uh, is there a small conflagration uh, uh, up to major campaign fires? It's going to be a couple, take a couple videos to do this, but what we're going to cover today is a 24 hour kit is what I call it. Everyone has kind of has their own thing. We all kind of feel diff different roles. And so the way you organize your gear and, and the way you spec things out needs to be really custom tailored to your particular job. So what, what, what I'm going to show you here today is my kit uh, to completely sustain myself for 24 hours. That's, that's without being supplied by anyone, without receiving any outside food or water, anything like that. It's 24 hours of me all by myself on my own. So let's jump into it. My kit for wildland firefighting breaks down into three distinct categories. What you see right here in front of you is the 24 hour kit. That's what everything looks like unpacked. Now over here to the left, you're going to see, now this is going to expand upon that. This is going to be the campaign kit. This has got to be able to push out to 21 days, typically 14, but it could be extended to 21. And then finally, the last over here is a little bit more job specific, is a sawyer's kit. The kit that a, uh, a guy that's gonna be running chainsaw, uh, a faller, is going to use on a fire. So today, we're gonna be covering the 24 hour kit. And before we get started, I think it's really important to note that we can't, you can't just bring anything you want. You're really, really restricted uh, by size, dimension, and weight. So this red bag right here, this has to, I have to be able to fit everything that I need in the 24 hour kit inside this red bag. And that's not very big when you put a full uh, Mystery Ranch uh, line pack on there. That, that thing takes up about two thirds of it. So everything's gotta be really, really well thought out. Also, right here, this is a Forest Service approved campaign bag. Everything that's going to extend that to your 21 days, 14 to 21, has got to fit in here as well as very strict weight limits uh, because of aircraft. There's got to be a standard. So if you have a team, uh, you know that they're going to have their, their stuff. Everyone knows that it's not going to exceed this so they can figure all that out. Uh, if you need to be dropped into an air, air, aircraft. So the whole thing, 21 days, has got to fit uh, in these two bags. Fasten your seat belts, here we go. We're just gonna start at the top, and that is gonna be with the hard hat. Now, a, hard, a wildland firefighting hard hat is not any different than a construction hard hat in that it has to have a chin strap. Now, you have to have a chin strap. If you wanna be on an aircraft, they're gonna want a chin strap. No chin strap, no go. That's just not the way it's gonna happen. The reason I have two is I work sometimes with multiple agencies. Um, I do some work with the United States Forest Service, and so if you work with an agency, they're going to issue you a hat uh, that you'll have to wear. Uh, if not, um, this is the one that I use for uh, contracting or volunteering uh, with my district. Uh, I'll use this one here. So pretty standard. One thing that I do, and I'd recommend you guys do this as well, is put, keep some shop towels or toilet paper uh, up, up in the at suspension. That way, if you get in an emergency, or you know, sometimes the food's not really good there and you'll get, well, you might have some issues, uh, you don't have to dig, take, take off your pack and dig through it. So uh, there's your hard hat. Uh, next, you're gonna wanna take a ball cap. I take a ball cap. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the hard hat gets a little bit tedious after wearing it all the time. And if you can get a little relief or take a little break and throw a ball cap on, you're gonna want this because it's always hot and always sunny, keeps the eye, sun out of your eyes. So pick a ball cap, whatever you want. Again, if you're with an agency, they're gonna give you one, but I'm often not uh, as a volunteer contractor, so I wear whatever I want to. Then we're gonna go to a Nomex shirt. Wildland firefighting, uh, the clothing is very specific and the colors are always gonna be the same. Yellows and greens, they call them. Yellows on top and greens on the bottom. What makes a wildland firefighting shirt what it is, of course, is the Nomex material. Nomex is a material that uh, is very re resistant to burning. Um, it is a good protectant for firefighters. Some of the design, uh, the design things to look for is uh, big oversized pockets because there's lo a lot of gear to manage. There's a lot of stuff going on. You need pockets to store things all the time. Arm pockets for administrative things, pencils and things. And the more, the more senior you get on the fire, you know, the more responsibilities that you have. And that is kind of the direction that I'm moving. And so you have to kind of take into account for that. 
Some of the nicer ones, uh, like these here, are going to have multiple vents because it's hot. You're in the hottest places in the country. Uh, you are in the middle of summer. You're in uh, wool socks, leather boots, full-length, thick, heavy pants, leather gloves, hard hat, shirt, t-shirt, all that. You can only imagine working harder uh, than you've ever worked in your life, and any advantage you can get is going to be helpful. I love these coaxer shirts because they have these ventilations these zip ventilations in them, and they don't look like much, but they are tremendous uh, in, the, uh, in their cooling abilities. Also, these have the coolings on, on the back of the arms, and, and, you know, so you get that draft that goes through there. I cannot tell you how important it is. Also, the sleeves are typically very long and very wide, and they're always gonna have Velcro, Velcro closures on them, so if you do get in a place that has a lot of cinders and hot things, you're going to be able to cinch those down around your gloves, and, and protect yourself. I carry a compass. I always have in my left pocket and I carry everything exactly the same always. I always, it, it's, one of my, it's one portion of my life that is actually very organized and I always know where it's at. I am absolutely a creature of habit when it comes to this and I always do it. The compass can be used for many things, obviously direction finding, but one thing that I use it for, this one has an inclin, inclinometer in it and that I can use this to cite to to, for, for map contouring lines uh, if, call, if, if you're trying to spot a fire. Uh, you can look at that, you can get kind of a degree angle from where you then find where you're at on the map. Uh, it's been exceedingly helpful. An old salty dog taught me how to do that and I've carried a compass ever since. I'm also gonna carry a couple extra pencils, a Sharpie and an extra blue pencil or pen in an admin pocket on there in case I lose my primary, which we'll get to in a minute. I'm gonna carry a, uh, just a uh, thrift store rain jacket. This is nothing fancy. I've been caught on fires uh, where it, it rained and everyone got soaked and I pulled this out of my pack and of course uh, it was very, very nice. Now, these things can be added and subtracted depending on what's gonna happen. I mean, if you know the forecast and you know that there's absolutely no chance for rain, and you're not gonna carry this. You don't carry it in your pack and hump that around all day. You're gonna keep throw it back in the red bag. The red bag is a reservoir uh, to be used to add and subtract things that you don't need uh, to carry on your person. So when you see all this gear, you're gonna think, whoa, that's a lot of stuff. I'm not always carrying everything in here, but I do have it within reach. It's always gonna be close. If I'm on an engine, and I typically am but not always, so you need, you need to, to know that you may think you're an engine guy and you're gonna be very fat and liberal with your gear. You, many times I've been pulled off, it's like, you know what, you're on a hand crew now, uh, get down over that hill, and the guys are like, oh man, I wasn't planning for that, and they're screwed. Also, a, co a cotton t-shirt, everything needs to be either Nomex, cotton, or merino wool, wool of some sort, merino wool typically is the most comfortable, because of fire. Any synthetics, anything like that, no bueno, you can't have it. Also, your t-shirts don't have any logos on them. You know, the screen printing or anything like that is going to melt and it's going to burn into your flesh and you will be very, very sorry. So go to the thrift store, you're gonna need to have t-shirts. Again, this, is, th this kit is complete in case, if I'm, let's say I'm out swimming somewhere, or, I, you know, or I'm flip-flops, I have nothing, I've got no socks. I need to be able to grab it and to know 24 hours I have everything that I need. So that's why I bring a t-shirt with this. All right, let's move on down to the trousers. Trousers, okay, also very specific to wildland firefighting. Huge cargo pockets on the side uh, to carry all sorts of things. Uh, of course, heavy, very heavy duty, double reinforced, a military, at least military standard, if not better. Uh, no mex, of course, adjustable, always weight elastic in the, in the back, very comfortable, huge back cargo pockets. And one of the most important things is big, wide open cuffs with Velcro enclosures. These Velcro enclosures, again, are so important because you, if you're working in hot places, and even if you're mopping up and just cleaning up after a fire, you'll find if you don't fasten these legs on your boots, you're, you'll, when you get back to your tent, you'll, your legs and everything will just be black from the soot. Uh, so that's specific. Cut very um, uh, ergonomically, uh, so you can work, you can bend and flex. There's a lot of thought that goes into these clothing. The ones that they give you, the standard issue ones, they're not so good. Uh, they're, they're actually pretty terrible. They chafe and they're uncomfortable. I would, if, if I were you and you were serious about this, and a lot of guys do it, and I've heard the same things true with the military, when you're issued substandard gear, you end up buying the stuff you need with your own money. 
Same goes for wildland firefighting. This stuff is all aftermarket, but I've got to live in it and I, and I just can't, I, I don't like the other stuff. Also, these have what is one of the best inventions of the world in the world, and you're starting to see this in more and more things. Even my motorcycle pants have these now, are these front zips. When you open those things up when you're hot and you're suffering, uh, it's like someone turned the air conditioning on. It's tremendous. So look for those if you have them. So yeah, if you're going in, you don't have the money to buy all this stuff. Well, you know, what I would recommend to you is first thing, get your first paycheck and buy yourself a good set of boots because no one is typically going to buy you good boots unless you're with like a, a government agency. And even then, not always. Boots are the most important thing. We'll get to those in a minute. Um, a, a belt. This is a classic wildland firefighting belt. It's a rigger's belt. This one's fall rated. Uh, whether you need that or not, who knows, but uh, that's kind of the standard. It's a tradition, and that's the way, uh, that's what you want. You want that, that rigger style belt. Be careful, a lot of these look like riggers belts, but they don't have fall rated buckles on them, so just know that. If that's important to you, you know, that you'll have to determine. Gloves. Gloves are very important. These are the government issue ones. The heavy, they're heavy duty. They're twice or three times as thick as normal gloves are going to be. Some guys don't like them. They think that they're too thick. Um, I, I, I've always liked them. I've got my name on there. Um, I, because I like the closures that they have and they're super durable and they're really great against uh, high temperature and heat, picking up hot stuff. What I've done to make them a lot more comfortable is to uh, rub open offs on them before I go. So I wear, wear these, don't go out in the field with brand new ones. Um, hoping that they're, you're going to break them in. They're really awful. They, you want to break them in beforehand. So stack your wood and, and use those uh, and rub them with open offs and they'll be pretty good. In my left hand cargo pocket, on the left hand side, I carry, this is my friend Alan turned me on to this, one of the best things in the world. It's called the man purse. The stuff happens quickly on wildland fires and you need to get your, yourself sorted out quickly and you're only going to be told once. It's a small community. If you are incompetent, if you don't follow orders, if you don't pay attention, if you mess up, well, it's gonna follow you around. So you really wanna be on it. And I don't wanna miss anything and, and be that guy that, oh, sorry, get on the radio. Uh, where was I supposed to go? You write everything down. So this is uh, what I carry in that left cargo pocket. And inside this, I have to keep reshooting this because I've got my name on everything. Okay, so this is uh, the, the man person. What the contents of, of this, what the contents of this is um, uh, a couple things. There's an IRPG right here. The IRPG is the green book. This is the Fi Wildland Firefighters Bible. This has everything pretty much you need to know uh, about wildland firefighting. If you knew the contents of this and had it memorized by heart, you'd be like the Michael Jordan of wildland firefighting. In here also, I'm gonna have uh, my red card, which is my certification for being a wildland firefighter. Uh, every year, I'm gonna start with a brand new right in the rain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna label that with the year on it, and I'm gonna keep a, a daily log of everything that I do. Who I talked to, uh, where I was, what my mission was, names, phone numbers, I'll reference this all the time. Also, I'm gonna keep some cash in here, an ID, and my Sp Fisher Space Pen. I like the Fisher Space Pen in blue. Blue, not black. I have filled out forms, many of them, uh, only to be told, go back and do it again because the US government only recognizes blue ink. So make sure it's blue. So this is an awesome, awesome thing. It's very compact, you pull it out. I pull this thing out of my pocket hundreds of times a day to reference numbers, to reference radio frequencies, to, for the IRPG, it is absolutely essential. You don't wanna have all that stuff loose floating around in your pocket. Uh, this is what you want. It's excellent, excellent. All right, let's move over to the cool stuff. Oh, boots, boots. How could I miss that? Boots and socks, the most important, probably the most important bit of your kit right there, apart from water. Uh, socks, I, I had this big argument the, the other night at training with a guy. I said, you, I was recommended to the, some of the younger guys get wool socks and get the best ones you can afford. Best socks I've found, without a doubt, are the Darn Tough. Uh, darn Tough socks, these are not them. These are, I think, uh, what are these, wigwams, back when they used to make good ones. But I invested in 14 pair of them and they are really good socks. I want socks that are as the heaviest, thickest, gnarliest, 100% wool socks that I can get because um, that's what I like. Some guys don't like that. Some guys say, well, I only wear those thin cotton socks. But I'll tell you a story on a fire two years ago. We went out and I made the mistake of not taking my campaign bag. I had my 24-hour bag and it turned into a campaign fire and we were gone for a week. 
all of us were suffering. You know, we'd been in the same clothes and socks for days, and we finally got a, got a little bit of relief, and the only place we could go was to Walmart. And we had to buy t-shirts and underwear and sleeping bags and all those things. And I bought their, their work socks. They were cotton work socks, the best ones that they had. They were crap. I mean, they were terrible. I cannot tell you how bad my feet felt in those and how oh, I'm not going to go into it. You want good socks. So uh, if you can't afford them, th th your first paycheck, you, get, you want to save up, you want to buy... 14 good pair of socks, and you want to bear, buy good boots, handmade boots. Don't, don't buy anything off the shelf uh, unless you have no other option. Get handmade boots. Who should you go with? There's several good brands. You know, I mean, there's some smaller micro brands that I'm not really familiar with that I hear are good, but the two big ones are going to be, uh, or three, NYX, White's, and uh, the guy that built my boots started his own business. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? That I think is probably the best. I forget. I'll put it in. I'll, I'll try to put that in the annotations. But they're, they all, both of them still make great boots. Um, this, you're going to cost you about $600. And, and I don't have the time and effort to go into all that and why. I know that sounds ridiculous. It's not. Uh, you have to have good boots. You're going to be in them 14 hours a day in the worst environments possible and they got to have a heel and they can't have any steel in them no steel that's what's specific about wildland boots is they have uh, soles that are screwed on they are um, they have old, full leather uh, uh, shanks there's no steel in there because that steel will heat up you can't have you have to have special glue you have to have special rubber you have to have special stitching because of the tremendous heat that you're walking on on and on and on boots but uh, that's it. Well, we, we've already discussed that. Let's go over to the, uh, the gear items. Okay, boy, we'll start at the top here. So uh, marking tape. There's lots of different marking tapes that, that have all sorts of different meanings. Some of them have markings for kill or tree or for a safe escape route or hot spots and all of that. A general all-purpose, like an orange or a pink, is good for marking whatever. Uh, there's a hazard. There's a bee nest. There's a nest of bees in the way. There's a there's a, you want to uh, say we, where a trail is or a road, you, what you want to have this, you want to have it accessible. Another thing I picked up from a buddy of mine that's a smoke jumper is they all carried this fiberglass reinforced tape. This is handy for everything. I got rid of the duct tape and all that stuff and replaced it with this because this stuff is tough. It's got fiberglass reinforcements in it and, and it, I mean, it, it's like iron. You can fix boots with it. You can't tear this stuff. It's not like any other tape that I've ever used. And this is the business right there. I'm going to carry a set of glasses. I'll, I'll wear contact lenses on the fire. I wear daily disposables, and, and I'll have a whole bunch of those in there. But I'll wear a, a pair of sturdy glasses um, in, a, in a tough case that, that can't get crushed. It's got an aluminum case there. Um, so glasses in case you, you get stuff in your eyes all the time. Sometimes you can't wear... You, your eyes will get so irritated from the smoke, you can't wear contacts, and so you want to have a backup set of glasses. Uh, this is an IFAC. This is a very comprehensive first aid kit. Again, I could do a whole video on this. There's been a lot of, lot of, a lot of thought and research into this as well, um, but that's uh, for another video. And a dedicated blister kit. Now, I wear custom boots, and I wear uh, high-quality socks, and I change them every day. I've never had a blister on a fire. I carry this for all of the poor guys that always do, who don't show up with good boots. I've used this on every fire. So it's got moleskin, it's got that special blister tape in there, it's got uh, some alcohol prep pads and things like that. I have dressed people's feet uh, more times than I care to, to talk about. Uh, this is a, a, a shroud, this is a Nomex shroud that's going to go around the back of your neck that will Velcro onto your hard hat. Some guys wear them all the time, I don't, I, I don't know how they do that. I, I, I've never worn this before. I mean, I've suffered some pretty hot heat um, and never felt like I need to get in there. But if it came down to it, I do have it. It's not that heavy and I carry it in the pack. Uh, toilet paper, extra, you take out the center roll. You were all about weight savings here. You don't want to carry that extra roll uh, and a half a roll, you know, whatever, whatever you want there. Keep that in your pack. Uh, this is a, um, a Kestrel. Again, your agency may or may not supply these. Uh, this is a, I've supplied this to myself because I want to know the humidity. I want to know uh, the fire danger. I want to know what to, how, what's going to happen. And this is, helps me predict exactly what's gonna, what's, what the fire is going to do. This is an, an invaluable instrument um, and I rely upon it all the time. Um, and oftentimes uh, it, it really helps with prediction uh, because 
not a lot of guys have them. Um, it's not a lot of weight. They are expensive, but this one is uh, specifically made for wildland firefighting. And, and again, that's a whole other video itself. I carry a chem stick in case I need to, uh, hey, we need to drop off something here, or we need to, we're gonna park here, or, or come in here, I can hang this up, especially at night, we fight fire at night a lot. Um, I only carry one, I have not used it yet, but it, they're kind of bulky and heavy, so, but I do carry that. I carry a Garmin GPS, um, I track everything on the fire, uh, especially when I'm in country that I have never been in before. We show up all the time and guys will say, oh, you know, whatever, the, you show up to the IC and, hey, okay, you get your mission. Yeah, go down there by the, by the old Smith's barn that burnt down and take a left and go by where the oak tree used to be. And this is not useful, so, and you get lost. And so I, uh, I'll turn this on. I've got a suction cup uh, mount for it that I keep with my admin, my briefcase, and I'll track everything. And I'll also mark significant things. If there's spot fire, I can mark that. I'll call in, I've used it for, for talking with aircraft to get GPS coordinates and on and on and on. Even one time, because I have the, I had this, I got a really cool mission to walk the entire perimeter of the fire and to map it. Take, I took this into uh, the um, to IC. They downloaded all of the tracks and they used that information uh, to do uh, the, the fire, the the map for the fire for the next morning. It was really really cool assignment, and I got that because of this. Here I'm going to have uh, a black bag that I just keep the, it's just a cotton bag I keep the instruments in, or no, I keep my sunglasses. Uh, cheap sunglasses, these are just tinted safety glasses because whatever sunglasses you take you're going to destroy, as well as a pair of safety glasses. I've never used these, uh, but you do have to have them um, by regulation. Also, this is something that I have added that one time that I've used, which was really nice when we got into some terrible, terrible sagebrush smoke. Uh, is a, what we call the Mount St. Helens mask. May 18, May 18th, 1980, I remember it. That when Mount St. Helens blew up, everyone was walking around Portland with these things. I've always called them Mount St. Helens mask after that. But these are the good ones, the 3M, the N95s. And the reason why I carry two is because, boy, you feel pretty bad when you put one on and your buddy on the engine, he doesn't have one. So I bring one for him or her as well. Uh, very nice to have. Uh, moving down here, I'm gonna carry a small micro Bic lighter. I'm gonna carry a Fox 40 whistle. I'm gonna carry a Aquafina uh, sterilizing tablets for drinking water. They weigh nothing. I've never used them, probably never gonna use them, but why not, right? And then this is very important, a headlamp. Now everything operates on AA batteries on wildland firefighting. Um, so you'll see, th this is just ubiquitous. You know, the, the guys that give you when you go and get supplies, they tape them up like this because that way you can snap them into the, the, the King radios. So you just go through these like crazy. So it's nice to have everything that, op if you can have everything that operates on a double A. That's why the Garmin's are double A. That's why the Kestrel is double A. This is where I make an exception is I go with the triple A headlamp. I had a double A headlamp. It's really hard to find one of good quality that's not huge and bulky and doesn't look like a, a miner's light. And so I, I packed one around for a while and finally I said, you know what, heck with that. I'm gonna go with these ultra light, super bright LED backpacker lights and I'll just carry, it takes three batteries. So I'll put three fresh, one in, th three fresh ones in, I'll carry three extra batteries in my kit right there. Uh, you know, so what, I can, I, it, these things last forever. Headlamp is essential, you have to have it. I felt it was important to go into a lot of detail on these videos uh, because well, I think it's important to explain why if you're going to pack something around all day long and those ounces turn into pounds, uh, you better be able to justify it. So I broke it into two videos. And now would be a good time. If you enjoyed this video, you can click the thumbs up. And I've got a little fun trivia question for you. How much do you think it costs to put this kit together? Put your guesses in the comment section and uh, I'll uh, see if I can tally it up and we'll see who can get the closest. And then uh, if you'd like, you can head out over, I'll attach part two in the playlist and that will be available for you to watch also. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys over in part two.